Hello, this is Professor Shapiro, known on the internet as Harry Hawk. Welcome to event 155. I just want to give you a quick little tour of Zoom. You can see my Zoom screen here. I'm sharing my desktop, not my video. Uh, but I just want to point out these controls. Uh, the green button here, you would see this on your own screen, lets you share your screen with me so that I can see what you're doing. There is a chat feature so people who are Zooming can uh, talk with each other. And most important, the mute and the video start button um, have little submenus. So you can pick which microphone uh, or video camera. And there's always these audio options, which if your computer, laptop, desktop doesn't have a microphone, you can use that to dial in for the audio. You need to have uh, the computer to see uh, obviously what I'm doing. Anyway, um, we are going to go right into our lecture here. Again, welcome to EVNT 155 event marketing. This is a week one lecture. This is a redo of the original because uh, it didn't record the first time. So my fingers are crossed that this will uh, work out fine. I do have an agenda for us today. I'm going to talk about event marketing, what it is. There are three tracks within the course. And I'll, I'll talk about those and what that means. It's in quotes because it's just uh, part of how I'm asking the students in the course to think about uh, themselves, what they want to get out of the course. I'm going to talk about uh, event marketing uh, 101, sort of the basics. And I'm also going to talk about the sort of the basic parts of marketing, which you may know as the marketing mix or the four Ps. I'm going to talk about something called the PESO model for media. PESO stands for paid, earned, shared, and owned. And uh, I'll explain all of that and how that's helpful. I'm gonna to talk to you about the difference between a business plan and a marketing plan. I'm asking students for this course to create a business marketing plan, um, but you have uh, some options and flexibility here. Um, and the point will be to pick the one that's best for you, um, that will make the course uh, give you the most value um, without taking up too much of your time. There is uh, a company called Event Scotland, and we'll talk about them and their sample template, which we will be using for the business marketing plan. We'll talk a little bit about digital marketing and how that has differentiated itself, changed its position from standard marketing. I'm going to give you a tour of Canvas. I do want to remind you a little bit about the week one reading, and that is on the right side of the screen here. And um, as you can see, uh, there's three cases, the lessons from a marketing guru. That's, that's a repeating title. The, the actual title of this particular case is the business of spiritual tourism. And then you can see there's two digital spotlight cases. One's called app adapting for music festivals. The other is marketing for extreme sports events, the X game. So you're asked to read all of that. You're asked to do some reading from tourism and hospitality marketing chapter. Now, I'm not listing the page numbers here. I'm not asking you to read the whole book. And that's one of the big points of this course is about 100, 380 pages within the course. I'm only asking you to read about 90. So you can um, spend more of your time in the class and doing activities. Um, if you want the actual pages, that's on Canvas. I will show you that as part of the tour. And of course, we're going to talk about some global trends by reading about them in consumer behavior and, of course, digital marketing, which will, of course, uh, relate to what I'm talking about in this lecture. So I have some learning outcomes. These are things that at the end of this lecture and to some degree at the end of the week, uh, you should be able to do some of this requires the reading, but most of this is based uh, solely on the lecture. The reading will reinforce it. Um, but you should be able to formulate the generic aspects of a marketing plan. In other words, if I said, what are the basic aspects of the generic aspects of a car? You might say an um, engine and three or four wheels. And if I said, what are the generic aspects of a motorcycle? You might say an engine and two wheels, although it could also be three. So you should know what are the parts, the basic parts of a marketing plan. The second outcome, students should be able to identify recent trends in marketing, including consumer behaviors and in digital marketing. I'm going to talk about digital marketing today, uh, and in the reading, you'll read about those global trends uh, like leisure, um, which we have here. Leisure means a combination 
of travel that combines business with leisure. And we'll also talk about authenticity. That's something that will come up throughout the course. Uh, the next outcome is you should be able to understand, again, the basic parts of a marketing plan or a business plan that relates uh, to the first one. So the first one is to understand sort of the generic parts like engine and wheels. Um, when we understand at this level, you should sort of have a sense of how they connect together, um, that the steering wheel is connected um, ultimately to the wheels on the car and powered by the engine. Those sort of basic things of how a business or marketing plan works. And then uh, next, uh, we have um, the student should understand that a business plan includes a marketing plan. In other words, a business plan is a larger document and one of the sub sections of a business plan is a marketing plan. So a marketing plan is less work than a business plan, but obviously contains less information. Um, one of the things you're gonna need to ask yourself um, is do you need a business plan or do you need a marketing plan as a result of this course? The catalog talks about and the curriculum talks about a business plan, which again, I'm calling a business marketing plan. A real full-on business plan is a tremendous amount of work, but if you need one, you can get one through this course. I don't want to take that away from you, um, but if that's not what your need is, then I'd rather you do a little bit of less work and do better work and more focus on the marketing. This is, after all, a marketing course. So again, you should be able to select and know what track you are interested in, which I'll talk about in a minute. Excuse me. There are three tracks for this class. The first focuses on creating an event for your own income and profit. So, you know, it's your music festival, it's your food festival, it's your small business festival. Um, you're the organizer, you run it, you fund it, you make the money, you may find some sponsors and uh, other uh, compatriots along the way, but it's your event. The second track is that you're simply looking to get a job in this space. So you may obviously start out at an entry level position, some kind of uh, assistant producer or assistant, uh, but your ultimate goal is to become an event manager, an event producer, an event promoter, an event marketer. Um, and the third track is that you want to use events not directly for profit, the way your music festival would make you money, but you want to create an event that, or work on an event that helps other people market their business to acquire leads or customers so you may have a product such as a car. And so to help uh, create leads for car manufacturers, you might have an auto show, right? And so of course we know there are many auto shows, the New York auto show, the Detroit auto show. I'm sure there's an LA auto show. There's a Geneva auto show, right? So people organize these shows, th their profit comes from helping these other people. Uh, in, this, in the case of a car show, obviously the, the people who are manufacturing, making cars, cars, accessories, and so forth. Um, so again, you should be able to pick the track and understand what track works best for you. And then um, you should know if you need to create a business plan or a marketing plan. And then finally, I want you to be able to understand the PESO model, which I talked about already for a few seconds, and we'll get into it a lot more. But again, PESO stands for paid, earned, shared, and owned media. It's a way of classifying virtually any kind of media understanding, you know, a little bit more about it. So event marketing, what is it? Um, and uh, again, in this course, um, I'm asking you to divide yourself into one of three tracks. You, of course, can work on all of these and learn about all of them. There's no restriction. But again, to minimize the amount of work that you have to do for this class by picking one of these tracks in all of your discussion boards and all the other parts of the course, your answers, your focus will be on your track. And that will allow you to have a narrower perspective, which will mean that you'll be able to do better work, more focus, more detailed work within that area. And in the course of the course, in the course of taking this course, 
by focusing on one area for all of your assignments, you will build up skills in that area. So if your goal is to work that second track to work for somebody, you know, to get a job, to get hired, um, you know, you need to really focus on that and do a lot of work about that. So at the end of the course, you really have an opportunity to get hired and so forth. If you want to create an event at the end of this course, you should be further along on that process and so forth. So event marketing is simply promoting events or using an event to create an experience that lets you promote other things. So again, we've talked about, I have my own event. It's the New York City Food Film Festival. I'm the co-creator. I created it with hamburger guru, uh, George Motes, who's a friend of mine. And uh, we started doing uh, live outdoor events, uh, attracting 1,000, 1,500 people. Uh, today, it's an inside event. Um, we used to be in Long Island City, New York, which is in Queens on the river. Um, today, we are in Manhattan in Times Square inside of a theater where we used to do 1,000 or 1,500 people. Uh, we now do 300, um, but we charge now. It's no longer free. So where we were giving something away for free, we now charge uh, 75 to to $100 a ticket. So it's a much different event. The event has changed, evolved. And uh, how we talk about that, how we promote it, um, how we position it, um, that is the four Ps. In other words, when you're doing a live event that's free and that includes food and it's outdoors in the summer in New York, it's pretty easy to attract 1,000, 1,500 people. But when you're in Times Square charging 75 to $100, it's still easy. We still can sell out. Most nights we do, but it's very different. Um, where it is, what price, how we're promoting it, and how we position it varies. And there are, within the event, there's always at least, generally, for every night of the or day event within the festival, there's two ticket prices. Um, there is a general admission, and then there's a VIP. And so, like, what's the difference, and why would somebody want one or the other, and why do we complicate it for ourselves by doing two different things? Because arguably it would be easier just to do one thing, all VIP or all general admission. It would be a lot less work. But we can get more money for a VIP ticket. A VIP ticket includes uh, 30 to 40 minutes of food and drink before the event starts. So a preview of the food. It is a food film festival. And then those people who are VIP get the first opportunity to pick whatever seat they want. Then once those people have had that opportunity, we open up for general admissions, they get whatever seats are left. Everybody who attends at the end of the screenings, which last about 30 to 75 minutes, depending on the night, usually a little bit closer to 50 to 60 minutes, but it depends. After the screenings, everybody's invited to an after party. That's all equal. Um, there's also food during the event. So every ticket gets food during the screenings and after, and the VIP get that custom special event um, pricing and, of course, food um, before. And there is also then a, a special ticket, the all VIP ticket, where you buy all VIP events for one price. It's a little bit cheaper than buying them separately. Um, so it, ultimately, then there's three levels. You can buy a VIP pass, you can buy a general admissions pass, or you can buy tickets for a specific event. All of that relates to place, price, promotion, and position. How do you position it? How did we change the position of the event from free and outdoors to inside in a movie theater? And by the way, we didn't go directly to Times Square. We were in many other movie theaters all over the city in Brooklyn and Queens and lower Manhattan before we ultimately had enough of a following that we were able to be in Times Square in a major uh, AMC theater with a large screen and an amazing projector and uh, two floors of space. And there is an actually an outdoor balcony. Um, so it's an amazing space, but obviously very expensive. And it has to be supported by the ticket prices. So when we create an event, or if you're looking to get hired, you have to essentially do the four Ps for yourself. How do you position yourself? 
Obviously, if you're located in San Diego, you're probably not going to be looking for uh, a job in uh, Mexico City or in Boston or in Atlanta, but maybe you are. Maybe you have a connection there. Um, where is it the price? Uh, again, what is your salary? What are you looking for? If you're creating an event, is there a ticket price? Some things are free. Some things have a price. Uh, there's lots of events today in the music space, especially where there's all sorts of pricing. There may be five, six, seven tiers of seating pricing where the best, uh, most expensive uh, pricing is like uh, first row or second row, you know, right in the middle, right in front of the stage. And then there's other add-ons where you get uh, posters and flyers and meets and greets and drinks and food before or after the event uh, with the musicians or pop stars or comedians, whoever's involved. So it can get very complicated. Um, and so now all of these four Ps, the marketing mix, how you uh, create the event, how you price it, how you promote it, where you locate it, um, is a consideration, something you think about before you start the event and as you build your marketing plan. A funnel, or particularly a sales funnel, um, is really the promotion. And today, it's rare that you just put an ad that says, my event is Friday, buy a ticket. That would be a single ad that's out there. Today, we run all kinds of ads, and we create a funnel. Uh, a funnel means like a, a typical funnel, it's wide at the top, it's narrow at the bottom. And the idea is we reach a lot of people at that first level. And as we go down the funnel, we're reaching less and less people, but the people who move down the funnel are becoming more interested. So the festival, at the end of the festival, we announce who won prizes, you know, what movie directors won awards. Um, before the festival starts, we announce a call for entries. All of this is building awareness. Two or three months before the festival, we start doing earned media, which is to say PR. We start getting stories in the local newspapers, magazines. Um, eventually, we send out um, ads, flyers, emails to past participants. And, and more and more, we work um, to enable people who are interested to come to the event for example, somebody who already knows about the event because they came from a prior year might get an offer for an early pricing on tickets. So they might be sort of in the middle of the funnel. But we can think about all of those ads, and, and it goes well beyond ads because uh, a, a particular sales funnel, part of the communication process, involves every interaction that your business or entity has with consumers. So that includes when someone talks directly to a person, whether it's on the phone or by email or in person, uh, and we call all of these touch points. Every place your business interacts with a consumer, whether it's a website, a blog, in person, um, at another event, each of those touch points is a form of communication and interaction that builds relationship. And with in our funnel then are all of these touch points. Um, and we can imagine um, where somebody has a few of these touch points, um, we can visualize them as having moved down the funnel. And where it becomes increasingly more likely that we want to reach out to them. For example, at the Food Film Festival, we have a bunch of people who have previously bought VIP tickets. Well, those are people who spend the most money with us. We might want to invite all of them to a free event or to some special screener or give them advance notice or even let them buy tickets several days in advance of anybody else to give them the first opportunity. And so based on how recently somebody has been a VIP customer, maybe they only bought one ticket five years ago versus somebody who last year bought five passes for the entire festival. So obviously maybe for all their friends or family, you know, we, we can look at that and create essentially a score based on all of the touch points, who is the most likely 
uh, to be interested? Um, who, who do we value the most, you know, from a loyalty perspective and from an income perspective? Um, and, and so by creating a sales funnel with all of these touch points and measuring and monitoring all of those, um, we are creating um, a sales pipeline, um, something that is repeatable something that we can do year after year. And if it's optimized and working well, then we know that our event has a great chance of being successful. Many of you might comment, oh, I went to an event because they had a discount ticket price. Well, why did they have a discount ticket price? Maybe it wasn't really a discount. Maybe they wanted to charge $50 and they just told everybody it's 100 so that when they offered it to you for 50, it seemed like a bargain or maybe they were having trouble selling, or maybe they wanted to make sure that they needed a minimum number of people. So maybe early on, again, they might have an early bird special. You buy tickets in the first week, 50% off. And then the, the prices may go up from there as it starts to sell out. So there's all kinds of things about how um, the marketing mix and the four Ps help us create sales funnels that ultimately help us promote our events, our activities, um, and that's what the course is going to be all about in a nutshell, how to do all of those things and how to create a marketing communication or business plan to organize and control, direct all of those things. Which then brings us to media, right? Most of those touch points are going to be through media. Again, you could stand on a corner and talk to everybody who is passing by and say, hey, I'm having an event tonight, why don't you come to it? Okay, there's no media involved, but the minute that you hand them a flyer, well, that's owned media. Owned media, which probably is the hardest to understand here, means that you own it. So you paid somebody, you bought the paper, you paid someone to put ink on the paper or used a laser printer, but you spent money, those are your flyers, you own them. Um, there may be some rules about what you can say on a flyer based on where you live. For example, if you lived in parts of Canada, it might have to be in English and in French. Um, or you may wish to put multiple languages on a flyer, but it's yours and you own them. Then moving around this model, we then have paid media. And it might seem like, well, I paid for the flyer, so that's paid media. But media, when we're paying for it, means that we're paying somebody else. So a Facebook ad, a Google ad, and not on the radio or TV, if we're paying a blogger to come and do a live uh, video on Instagram or Snap for us, or Snap, Snap Story, um, we're paying them. Uh, if we're paying an influencer uh, to share or post uh, about us or a YouTuber to come in, um, that's all paid media. Earned media, what I've already mentioned a few minutes ago, is essentially what we would have used to have called PR or public relations, press relations. Earned media is media you get from the merit. In other words, if you're doing a local event in San Diego, it's really unlikely that the New York Times is going to cover it because they, they cover New York news and then some national stuff. But it's far more likely that a local paper in the San Diego area would cover your event. It, as you get away from the major papers into neighbor, neighborhood papers or bloggers, uh, it becomes increasingly more likely that it might get covered um, because somebody who's local to you has greater access. And if your event has some kind of local flavor to it, um, they're going to want to cover that. They're going to want to bring that story to their audience or to their platform, meaning, again, their audience. Um, so we earn coverage. We earn coverage on blogs. We earn coverage on social media, uh, the local TV station. I used to do events in New York like a hot dog eating contest, and we would invite the Brooklyn Borough President, sort of like the mayor of Brooklyn. Brooklyn has about three and a half million people doesn't have a mayor, there's a New York City mayor for all five boroughs, but the borough president is pretty prominent position. He essentially runs uh, a good chunk of the, of the Brooklyn part of the government. Um, if we could get him to show up at an event like that, then the press would come. 
because they love a very charismatic guy, the gentleman that I used to work with, who was uh, borough president for about 12 years. And so he was able to help us by coming. He knew he was helping our business by coming. That was sort of his purpose. And when he was there, that would, of course, uh, help us bring in the press. And we, we did other kinds of things like that. We, we would in, have an invited guest that would help bring in the press and we'd earn media. Finally, shared kind of makes sense if you think about Facebook, right? So you post something, someone shares it, then that's shared media. Someone shares um, a link to your Instagram article. Um, but also, if I gave you a flyer, which is owned, and then you shared that flyer with somebody, well, that's shared. If you uh, pay to put an ad in a magazine, and then someone shares that magazine, um, it becomes part of uh, the shared cycle. So um, the PESO model uh, was created by a lady named Jeannie Dietrich. She works in PR. She's a very modern, forward-thinking PR person. PR, marketing, and sales today are all interrelated. That's not you know, directly related to this course. So I won't go too deep into that. And uh, Jeannie Dietrich has a blog called Spin Sucks. So uh, this is an idea that she developed. And you can look at this slide um, and just, you know, going around, we see publicity, influencer engagement, right, is between media and shared. So if you're getting uh, somebody who wants to cover you um, and they're sharing stuff about it, it's right on the edge of that. Social media, of course, is here owned, includes all the content that you create, and even content that you require uh, folks to do for you. Um, so if you hire a bunch of people and part of the job requirement is that they have a Instagram or Facebook account and that every morning for two weeks they share a live video, um, you know, that, that's part of it. You could argue, is it ethical for you to do that? And that's a, a concern. You should always be concerned about that. But if that's part of the job, if you've um, made it clear why you're doing that, what the guidelines are, provided training and so forth, it's a reasonable thing. Incentives um, are when you might have like an affiliate link. Someone shares your store link and then you'll give them uh, some of the income from the merchandise. Um, so it, it's somewhere between owned and paid because you are paying for part of it. Obviously, again, paid media, we've already talked about anything that you're paying for. Um, and then in the middle of all of this is something called authority, which we're gonna skip over for now, but it's really um, you know, saying that the content is quality, that the content is believable and, and so forth. And um, so on this previous slide, I asked, what does the PESO model cover? Is it digital media or all media? And, and to me, it's all media. Uh, it tends to focus a lot on digital because historically, media didn't have that really that shared component. It was either earned, paid, or owned, right? TV advertising was paid, owned was like your catalog that you printed and earned was PR. When we get social, um, it, it made it a lot more complicated. And as you're working on your four Ps, your position for yourself, your event, or the events that you're using to promote other businesses or products, whatever track you're in, you're gonna to need to pick and choose from among the media. And it's important to understand what it is. Like in the same way, if you're out in a nature walk and someone says, what's that flower or what's that tree? Um, you know, is it a fruit tree or a, is it a flowering plant? Is it an herb? You know, what is it? You wanna know its classification. Is it poisonous, right? Maybe you wanna bite into it. Is that very edible? Um, the PESO model helps us think about media. And when we're thinking about those four Ps in the marketing mix, it also gives us ideas of how to use all four types of media within our mix. And that's really a big part of marketing today. So we, we have to think about all these different types of media, including also TV, radio, print, all of that. And then also back uh, here when I was talking about the funnel. So it's not only which media do we use, it's when do we use them? At which touch point? Is it the first touch point, which we might call the top of the funnel, a, a little further down after they've built a little bit of a relationship with us? Uh, your bank has a, you've been with for many years, you know, has somewhat of a relationship with you. It may not be 
a close relationship. It may depend on uh, maybe you have a private banking account with a personal banker. Well, then you might have a really good relationship. Why do banks offer private bankers and personal bankers? Well, if you have enough money or have enough of whatever it is that they're looking for, then they'll invest more in you, right? If they have a, a closer connection to you, it's a tighter touch point, you're further down the funnel. If they have a new product or service, they can just call you up on the phone. If you don't have a personal or private banker, they may send you a flyer in the mail. Um, that's really more top of funnel, it's your bank, but you really don't have that same personal relationship. Or maybe you have a, a teller that you go see uh, three, four, five times a year or more, you know them by sight, maybe they might suggest something to you. So deciding uh, what media and deciding when to deploy it within your funnel, within your sales pipeline, um, that's another big aspect of marketing. So now uh, I wanna talk very quickly about this business plan versus marketing plan. I've already talked quite a bit about it in this lecture, but I just wanna repeat that a business plan includes the marketing plan in the same way that a glove box is part of your car. Um, when you buy a car, it generally for almost all cars comes with a glove box. Some come with more than one. Um, you know, most people don't put a lot of thought into the glove box that comes with their car. But if it's important to you, uh, you might buy one. Obviously, certain very fancy race cars, other high-end cars may not have a glove box. And then very fancy luxury cars might have huge glove boxes or more than one. In a Rolls Royce, there's uh, generally some compartment in the back where you can have essentially a little refrigerator that chills your champagne while you're driving around, right? So, you know, the little refrigerator that holds champagne or the glove box for most of us is included in the car, right? The business plan is the overall um, cost, strategy, tactics, the mission, the objective of the business, where the marketing plan is a narrower discussion of cost, strategy, and tactics, messaging only really related to the marketing and the promotion. So uh, I will show you exactly uh, what we're talking about here, but what you need to think about is what do you need and which one to pick. If again, uh, the curriculum says that you can, through this coursework, create a business plan. And if that's something you need, that you need some help with, that you uh, want to understand uh, more about, then you should pick that. On the other hand, if you don't really need to do that extra work, and it's not going to be helpful to you, then I would suggest that you don't. Um, there is parts of the business plan that you need to do, obviously, to come up with the marketing plan. We can't create a marketing plan if we don't know what the business is selling, how it hopes to make money, and so forth. And so that's why I'm calling uh, our marketing plan a business marketing plan. It includes a little bit of the business plan and a big focus on the marketing plan. So uh, what is Event Scotland and why are we talking about them? This is a group in Scotland, part of the United Kingdom, um, and they have put out a tremendous amount of resources to help uh, local people, the Scots, uh, create events and produce events. And uh, we will uh, link to a lot of their resources uh, in the course. Uh, but one of the things is they offer a business plan template and a marketing plan template. But these templates aren't generic for any kind of business or for any kind of marketing. They are specific for event businesses or event marketing. And so uh, I have this link here, I'll be sharing it with you, um, but I wanna look at what it is and explain to you uh, what it is that we're looking at. This is a Google Doc. We'll be using Google Doc extensively in this course, all of the Google apps, uh, the slides and the spreadsheets and so forth. All our work has to be done within Google so I can access it and share it. And this document is laid out sideways, what they call landscape mode. It's wider. Um, the pages are shorter and longer. It's a regular page just turned on its side. So eight and a half inches in one direction, 11 inches across. And I want you to understand what this template is, the different parts of it. So when you open it up, you have an understanding of what I'm expecting you to do with this. And so this first two pages, is simply telling you what an event business template is and, and giving you some hints and help about where to focus. And so these first two pages, when you're done with your marketing plan, your business marketing plan or your business plan, you're gonna delete these first two pages. 
Now we get to page three. This is actually the title. So this will become the first page of your event. You don't need to fill in any of this or look at it. You can print it if you want, but it's just telling you what are the parts, what, what are the major parts, not all the parts, the major parts. Now, when we get to page four, it looks like something very much like what we just saw, but it's, it's more structured. And it looks like maybe you should start filling this in because it says template after all. But no, this is just the table of contents. Eventually we're gonna have to put page numbers here. Um, so you essentially page two, page three now will become again your first page. This is the title page. And then we have a table of contents. So someone who's looking through here knows the order that things are in. And again, ultimately the page numbers. Finally, we come to page six. And this is the executive summary. We see it listed here in the table of contents. An executive summary is like in a report or research where you might do an abstract. The executive summary is the review of everything. It's all of the detail, but just little bits and pieces, the highlights. Um, what an executive senior level person might need, they don't need to know necessarily all the details. Um, of course, they have this table of contents, so if they're very interested in some aspect of it, um, they know where to look. But the executive summary is going to talk about all of these things. What is the event, the event's vision and mission. Now this, starting on page six, as you can see here, page six, this is something that you need to fill out. So where it says what the event is, this is where you need to add, you know, Harry's Food Film Festival and so forth. So starting on page six, you're gonna fill these things in. This is the template. And then we have the background and history section. Again, you're gonna fill this in. And just cause this is just a sentence here, you're gonna need to write a couple paragraphs. It, it can go on to other pages even. Um, so like where it's event history, um, you know, where did the idea come from? Maybe the, it's, the event has never been done before. It's your event, you're gonna start it. But where did the idea come from? You've been to music festivals, you've been to food festivals. You're gonna to need to write a couple of paragraphs here. You're gonna delete what's there, and then you're gonna write, my idea comes from, right? And you're, you're just gonna go down, uh, describe the idea, um, why you think it's a great idea and so forth. Um, you're gonna have to fill this in. And again, I'll, I'll just uh, remove all that and restore it back uh, to where it came. And again, there's also this background in history, an outline of who you are. Why should I believe that you can do this event? But this is also for yourself. I mean, hopefully other people will be looking at this, sponsors and other people. Um, but this outline of who you are is also how you take inventory of yourself, the skills that you have, you know, why are you the right person to do this? And then it just goes on from here, vision, mission, each of these, again, um, you would delete it and you would fill it out. Um, and so um, if you have trouble with this, if this is not crystal clear to you, schedule some time with me. There's links I'll show you in Canvas. You can schedule a half an hour session with me as often as you want through Zoom, so I can see what you're doing or on the phone, a shorter 15 minute session on the phone where we can talk about these things. I can literally help you get started. I can help you in the middle. I can help you at the end, review it. Um, this document you're gonna be working on for most of the course. You can start the first week, uh, certainly by the third week you should be starting. Um, and obviously by the eighth week it needs to be done. But I can help you with this. So if it's not really clear how to work with a template or what I'm looking for, how much detail I'm expecting. Let's talk, and again, you can schedule those as often as you want, whenever you want. It gives you a link um, right to my calendar. I'll show you that later when we get to Canvas. And it goes all through here. There's several SWOT analysis that we're gonna have to do. Every one of you should be familiar with SWOT analysis based on the prerequisites for this course, but if you're not, again, let me help you with that. So there's a development plan that has a SWOT analysis. This is about, um, the event that you're going to develop over the next three to five years. Um, the requirements of the event, what kind of, if it's a swimming event, you need a swimming pool or an ocean or a lake, right? What do you need? What are the requirements? 
And now we're into the marketing event and PR planning template. So this is a subsection. It came from another document. I've merged them together. I'm still making a few changes. There's another title here. Um, and now again, you're, this is still part of the template. You're gonna go in and start editing these things. What is the positioning? Uh, you're doing an event for food, but is it for kids? Is it for disabled people? Is it for wealthy people? Is it for foreigners? Is it for people who have never experienced uh, a Sonoran hot dog? Or is it for people who've never had a Philadelphia cheesesteak? What is your event? And again, you're just gonna answer these questions and you can use more bullets. You can even you know, hit return and do a, a sub bullet A and sub bullet B, right? You, you can add as much detail um, as it needs and, and, and enough you know, for me to fully understand your event. And now here's another SWOT analysis. And while the first one talks about the event over you know, the development of it, you know, the risks of developing it, this one here is really from a communications and marketing perspective, it's really looking at the direct marketing competition. If you're doing a car event in Detroit, do you want to be a week before the auto show at the same time as the auto show or at some other part of the year? Now, it may make sense to do it during the auto show because there's so many people coming to the town. There's so many people thinking about cars. On the other hand, they may not have time to come to your event because they've got all those other things to go to. So it might be the best time when everybody's thinking about cars, but then from a competitive standpoint, may be really difficult to get people to come. So that's what this SWOT analysis is focused on. You're gonna talk about your marketing mix, um, how to make it convenience. How is it gonna be easy for folks to get to your event, to park, to come, to get a ticket? You know, there'll be long lines, uh, those kinds of things. And then what they're calling the marketing tools to me is the media or essentially the peso model. What are all the things that you're gonna use? You don't have to use every one of them. And there's many things, you know, very specific Snap versus Pinterest versus Facebook versus Instagram. You don't have to use all of those. You don't have to use them all at the same level in the funnel. What, do you, what is your gonna be your original outreach? How are you gonna get the word out? And then for the people who become interested that have watched your video, maybe they, everybody who's watched 50% of your video, maybe you'll send them another ad or another video. And yes, that's possible, uh, how it all connects together on, on Facebook and Instagram and um, on your website. We can track who watches so much of a video and then target them with another video. We don't know who they are as a person, but we know their attributes, especially we know that they've watched say 50% or 75% of a video. Um, and then we, we can retarget them. We're gonna talk all about that. Um, what are your key strategies here? Um, again, the initiatives. Again, this all relates to the promotion. You may have these elsewhere in the business plan, um, but this is all about, you know, if you're gonna do a media day, think about a draft, an NFL uh, draft, right? Um, they have a media day. Why do, they, why do they do that? I mean, people are interested in the draft, but you know, well, they can make some money from it. Um, they're introducing potential new players. They're bringing in all the people who may have watched college football who wanna see you know, someone from their college get drafted or someone from their area, someone maybe they went to high school with. Um, and it's all about getting people involved um, ultimately, right? So that when the season starts, you know, people are excited. You know, we're building awareness, we're building excitement uh, the same way that baseball, you know, spring training, you know, has become, you know, the precursor to the season, getting people warmed up and ready, you know, for baseball because, you know, 180 games for some people is absolutely not enough baseball. We need spring training. Okay, and now this is something that I have added, R, marketing like a pirate. When we're talking about funnel, we're talking at that top level, I, I mentioned the word awareness. How do we get awareness out? Again, NFL, a media day related to the draft. Um, many events like an auto show will 
have a VIP event a day or two before it actually opens. The displays are still being put together where they get the local media in, television stations, podcasters, bloggers, YouTubers, all to get the word out. So, you know, you don't want to get the word out when the show's over, right? If you have tickets, especially most of these auto shows require some kind of ticket, um, you want to let people know they need to buy the ticket. Obviously, um, when the event is coming a month or two ahead of time, uh, we might want to have some coverage in the newspaper. We may want to have billboards. We may want to have ads. And again, if we have email addresses from everybody who's previously um, been to the event, uh, we may want to send them an email, offer them an early uh, ticket price, or um, offer them, again, some kind of VIP opportunity. So awareness here is, is building that awareness, the message. That's some kind of media. Activation is getting someone to do something. And what's important to understand is that essentially awareness is really the top of the funnel. And then we get them to do something. Now, you might say, well, I get them to buy a ticket. Well, that will happen. A few people will see the very first ad, a single touch point, and they'll buy a ticket. But some businesses require dozens, 50, 60, 70, even 100 or more touch points before someone will give them revenue. And then even after they've given them revenue, they may not give them additional revenue without hundreds of other touch points, you know, before, you know, um, you'll buy a second car or more uh, of a subscription or a longer subscription or that you'll renew. But again, awareness, just how do you get the word out? Activation, and you'll have multiple activations. How do you get someone to visit your blog, to visit your YouTube channel, um, how do you get somebody to come to a media day um, th that someone may be a blogger? So you, you may have this whole awareness effort, right, just for bloggers. You may, you know, copy this whole thing and paste it in again, uh, and this time for general ticket people and do it again for VIP people. So, um, I, just because I have one of these here doesn't mean you can't uh, duplicate these for, for different audiences, different members of the public, or what we might call stakeholders. Um, so again, awareness, top of the funnel, getting people aware. Activation is, is just doing anything, visiting a website, um, looking at pricing, um, leaving an email address or texting a phone number. Um, retention is getting them to come back and visit you again. It's building the relationship. If you're uh, buying a car, um, you might visit the car website many times before you actually go into the dealership. You might play with the configurations, play with pricing. You may go to other places to do research, Kelly Blue Book or Emmons, or um, you might, again, just spend time on, on Google. Uh, you might spend time watching videos on YouTube. Um, so activation, getting them to do something, retention, getting them to do it again, coming back, um, coming back again and again. Um, referral is getting them to give you somebody else, right? Um, we'll give you, for every ticket you buy, we'll give you a free ticket if you share it with somebody. Well, maybe you know that your event, if it's a Valentine's Day event, well, they'll give the free ticket to uh, whoever their Valentine is. But for some other events, giving out a free ticket might mean that a whole new group will come um, because they have one ticket, they might need to get several others. But just adding friends to a list or when you're on LinkedIn or Facebook, when it says recommend friends to other people. And ultimately we have revenue. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean the final price, right? It might mean you put a deposit down on something. Uh, it might mean that you bought a ticket. Um, well, that's the first year of the event. The person bought a ticket to one night. Uh, maybe next year we go through this whole thing again through the activation and retention and all of that. We want to retain them over the year. Next year we wanted to buy two tickets to two events or buy the entire five night VIP ticket. Okay, budgets um, are in here as well. Um, and so you're going to list out all of the different kinds of media activities, all of the actions that are in here and uh, mentioned uh, throughout the uh, this template, you're going to come down here and, and give us a budget for all of those. Don't forget labor and so forth. And now um, the last pages, which are now page 17, 
sorry, page 18 and 19, but as you start to fill out uh, the sheet and add pages, uh, they may end up on a different page, but section six, the financial plan considerations, there's a budget here for the whole event, and uh, section seven, management and control, and there's a whole timeline, flow sheet, project planning um, that you can do here. Those sections six and seven, as well as um, this last section, which should be eight, um, are completely optional. That's the rest of the business plan. So if we can go back to the table of contents, um, sections one, two, three, four, five, you have to fill in. Section six and seven and eight are optional. Uh, appendixes are places to put extra information. Maybe you have a floor plan or um, you've got extra logos or a sample video or a sample menu. Uh, those kind of things can go in the appendix. So again, if you're going to pick to do the business plan, you're going to do all of this, including uh, the financial planning and the timeline planning. Um, if you're only going to do the marketing part, then you'll do sections uh, one through five. And again, if that's not clear, and you can always rewind this video and watch it, just schedule time with me. I don't want you to feel stressed out. I just want you to get in touch. You can text me as well, um, but let me help you. If you're not sure, if you're unclear, um, you know, you, it's okay to try to figure it out on your own. I'm not, not asking you not to try to figure it out, but I'm also asking you not to get stressed and worried. It's an eight week course, it kind of moves very quickly. So if you've got stress, concern, just schedule some time with me and uh, we'll figure it out. So that is uh, the business plan. That's what we're gonna be using. There's a lot of other event-based uh, event resources from Event Scotland. We will talk about that. And uh, so then what is digital marketing? And so it, it's the PESO model looking only at digital stuff. Well, what is digital? Email, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, websites, blogs, YouTube. Uh, a digital sign. You've seen you go to McDonald's or Burger King or your local bank, then we have a digital sign that's built into a TV. Well, that's stuff you might need at your event to put digital signs all over the place to let people know what time lunch is or where the next exhibition is or uh, to alert people to lost and found. If you build an app uh, for your event, um, that's part of the digital marketing. So the digital marketing would cover before, during the event and after the event. So within digital marketing, we have digital messaging. So again, emails, um, messages on Facebook, messages inside of Facebook Messenger. In, if you have an application, pushing messages to someone's application. I'm sure you've all had uh, some kind of app on your phone. I'm going to assume uh, most of you have phones. I assume perhaps even all of you. And if you have apps on your phone, you may get a notice from that app. Oh, you should do this. You get a notice. You, you have a bill. You have a, a reminder, a calendar entry. Even if you don't have a smartphone, if you have an older phone, you still get texts that come in. And when those texts come in, your phone gives you some kind of notification. It may be a, a sound or a buzz. It may vibrate, right? When the phone rings, even if you don't have a cell phone, if you have a home, traditional phone at home, uh, well, someone calls, it rings. That's a, a notification. And digital messaging is all of these digital things. And so then I've, I've talked about how we can link all of these together. And this is really um, the, the part that makes digital marketing work. Anybody can send out emails. Anybody can post on Facebook. And, you know, for your event, typically today you're going to do that. Unless it's an event for people who hate Facebook. Uh, you're probably going to want to be on Facebook or Instagram or Snap or Pinterest and so forth, maybe LinkedIn. But there's this thing called digital plumbing. This is a term coined by my friend Dennis Yu. Dennis Yu is a Facebook marketer, digital marketer, and uh, he's uh, fairly famous. He's bought over a million, sorry, over a billion dollars worth of Facebook ads. He does work for major brands in the past like Nike, uh, the Golden State Warriors, and many, many others. And digital plumbing I've already told you about that's how like when somebody watches a YouTube video or a Facebook video and they watch 50% of it or 95% of it, maybe they watch three seconds of it, 10 seconds of it, that you can anonymously um, then set up a tracking 
so that you don't know who they are, but you know that they've watched that much of that video, um, you can then push them another message. Um, so for example, with a university client of mine based in uh, the East Coast, a major university, um, they have all kinds of uh, educational events for uh, corporations. And so there's a registration process. You go to a, a website, not their own, right? So it's not owned media. Um, it's it's a, a website that they're paying for and people register for the event on that website. Now they also, what I help them with is we do uh, paid advertising on Facebook. But since they don't own the website where people are giving them the email, how do we know if the people saw the Facebook ads? And well, there's a way to do it where we enter, we take those emails, we upload them to Facebook and Facebook tells us, oh, uh, of the 50 emails that you uploaded, uh, we found 60% of them. So 40% we couldn't find. But of those 60, 10% uh, of those people had seen your ads. Um, I worked with another uh, client of mine um, who has traditional in-store sale. They have salespeople who sells reps who go out and, and communicate directly with store own, with um, customers. And they have an online store. And so it's always easy for us to track the online store sales back to the Facebook ads or back to Google uh, ads. But we weren't able to link in the sales coming from the sales reps or the sales coming from the phone line because, well, the sale didn't happen online. So Facebook wasn't able to really keep track of it. But in the same way where we uploaded the emails from the university through a very similar process, we took um, during a big sales period, they had a, essentially a St. Patrick's Day sale. We took all of the offline sales, whether they were in the store, on the phone, or if they were done in person with the sales rep, we took all of those and put them uh, into a spreadsheet and uploaded that to Facebook, including the time and date of the transaction and the, how much they spent. And Facebook was able to say for the $700 worth of ads that we ran, we were able to show that $50,000 of sales had been attributed to those ads. Now attribute doesn't mean caused by, it simply means people saw the ads before they purchased. Uh, we'll talk about attribution further in the course. If there's a car dealership and on the way to the dealership, you've already decided to buy that car, you see their ad, and then you walk into the dealership and buy the car that you were planning to buy. Well, we could say that everybody who bought the car has seen that ad, but if you were all the way there uh, with the intention of buying the ad, the fact that you saw it, that billboard or sign, really didn't change your mind. Maybe it helped a little bit. Uh, maybe you had cold feet and the sign uh, helps you uh, get over the cold feet. So it's hard to know, but attribution only means that you saw the ad prior to making the purchase. And we'll get into that. And so we talked also again about funnels, sales funnels. And so we can have, again, funnels that include all kinds of touch points, talking to a phone rep, uh, meeting somebody in person, uh, going to a mixer or a networking event, uh, going to a volunteer day. All of those things are in person in the real world uh, and could be part of our sales funnel. Uh, a digital funnel is simply taking all of the digital events and connecting them with the digital plumbing. And as I've said, there are now ways of connecting offline events as well. So that's something that uh, we want to do. Um, so digital marketing is using all of the media that fits into the PESO model, which is all digital media. We send messages and ads, some of it's paid, some of it's earned, some of it's shared, some of it's owned. We keep track of it with digital plumbing. So people who've seen one thing, we can invite them to do something else. And but by the way, it's more than just inviting people to do something. If somebody's already purchased, we should be excluding them from certain things. We don't wanna treat them like they're not a customer when they've already bought. We don't wanna even waste money asking them necessarily to buy again. Uh, you know, if it's something that, you know, people aren't gonna buy every week, you might buy toilet paper or tissues or uh, milk every week, but you know, you're not gonna buy a new car every week if you just bought a car. I shouldn't be necessarily showing you uh, ads for more cars, it's a waste of money. And so again, digital marketing, digital messaging, digital plumbing, and then creating funnels. So we have uh, our, our model, marketing, 
like a pirate. Um, marketing like a pirate lets us use our marketing mix to create our funnel using the peso model to activate, sorry, to get awareness, to activate, um, to then get retention, referral, and revenue. And, and that's what the digital funnels are. I hope that's clear. Again, if it's not, I'm happy to go over this with you personally. Um, and so that is the end of this uh, part of the lecture. And then I just want to go now and, and give you a tour of Canvas. We are in Canvas. This is my student view. So this is the way you would see the course other than you won't have this pink border. That's just how they, they put it up here. So I know that it's the student view. And what we're looking at here is the home page of the course. Got a little graphic here that explains um, that events uh, connect to tourism, hospitality, and public relations, and then go on to impact every aspect of the hospitality industry. Um, we have a bunch of reading assignments. You can click on this link here, and that will take you to them. We have another graphic here that shows that the marketing mix is at the center of all kinds of travel, hospitality, and tourism activities. And then um, I talk a little bit about that and about the course, and then I get into the reading. And so the, every, this whole course is divided into a week before Wednesday and then before Sunday. In other words, uh, every two, three and a half days, um, it's really like a new week in the course um, because we have to cover 15 weeks of material in only eight weeks. So before Wednesday of every week, you'll have an assignment and then another assignment that's due before Sunday. So you can see the pages here, that just very specific pages that I'm asking you to read in all 90 pages over the eight weeks. So a little bit more than 10 pages uh, a week. So not a lot of reading, um, but some of it um, is very timely and it's all very important. Um, so here's the week one reading for the second half and then we have week two before Wednesday and then before Sunday. And again, the readings for this course are due the first day of the period, meaning um, for the first week is due uh, before Wednesday. The second part of the reading is due before Sunday. So by that Sunday, you should have read it. And then after that, once we get into the second week, it's really due before Monday and then due by Wednesday. But it, it's divided up that way. I want you to be reading ahead of the lecture so that when I'm giving you the lectures and giving you the material and we're having our discussions, that you're reading ahead of the discussion um, so that you can add value to the discussion. So uh, just to show you, we can get back to that home page by clicking on home here. Um, here was that link we clicked on. And here's where I'm telling you that I can help you get started. I can help you in the middle of the assignment. I can help you review an assignment, you know, before you turn it in. I can also create a custom video for you or a screen share like this. So if there's something you're not sure what to do, just ask and I'll make it, I'll do it. And you have these links here where you can schedule appointments. The first one, the orange one is for a 15 minute phone call. The second one is for a 30 minute Zoom meeting. You can do this as many of them as you want. If you click on it, you'll see it will open up. Um, it will tell you that this is setting up a virtual office meeting and um, it will show you a calendar. And so we've shown you the next day and all of my availability over a couple week period. And you can pick whatever time you want. It's gonna show you these times in your local time zone. So if you happen to travel to Hawaii or Paris or uh, Brazil uh, during uh, these trips or you're moving around the US, um, wherever you are, as long as your computer has the local time, it will make the appointment in your local time. But I'm based in New Jersey, so uh, for me, I'll know to show up uh, in East Coast time. And, and that's, that's really it uh, on that. Um, further down, I have some information about the book. It's an ebook. I've recorded a video about that. Um, there is a website for the book, and I encourage you to check that out. We'll be looking at some of the videos from that. And then I have a list of essentially how to contact me. Um, you can text me anytime and get the fastest response. You can email me, you'll get a response generally within 36 hours. We have a Q&A form, and I will check that twice a week. 
but the human A form is for you to support each other, ask questions that you yourselves can answer and get help from each other. There is a Blackboard uh, technical support line. I give you some information about that. Um, there's a Canvas support line. I'm sorry, uh, technical support issues. Um, and then um, ooh, I got to update this here because I got the, the wrong course number there. And then uh, Canvas support number. And then finally, Zoom. This will link again to that Zoom meeting schedule. You can use these nice big buttons here. And then the rest of the course, we have modules. And this is truly the most important part of the course. There are an, There isn't a, a list of assignments, and I will put that up into the navigation after the beginning of week two. Um, but if you only look at the assignments, you will fail the course because the assignments only contain things that have due dates. But within here, within the modules, is actually the course, the information about the course, the information about how to do the assignment, the information about what is coming up. So for example, you can see here's the icebreaker. Here's the reading. I have weeks and work. Well, what is that? That is a page, hopefully most of you have seen by now, that shows you each week and, and shows you what the first day is and what the last day is. And again, because we're divided into the first part of the week and the second, it has the dates for the Wednesday and the Thursday of that week. You can see week seven um, is just a short week. We only have uh, a few days, so there's no dividing. And if you look at all that, we essentially end up with 15 periods. So even though it's an eight week course, we cover the same material as a normal 15 week course. We have a link external to uh, the scheduler. But like, so how do we get back to where we were? Well, we go to the modules. And again, we, we as we go through them, we can complete them. Um, and as you can see here, there is um, a week one part two here. Um, and there's a pre prerequisite. You need to take um, this uh, marketing quiz and look at all of those pages um, before you come through. Also, there's a whole vocabulary area, which you can use and will use again throughout the course. And again, I made a video on that. Hopefully you've seen that already. Um, there's a grade section, which you can go in and see your grades. Uh, announcements. Um, there's many announcements. You can go in and, and see all of them. If there's a blue dot, it means you haven't read them. Um, so you can see there's already many announcements. You can go back and look at them. You can also uh, search for them. Um, so if you want just the one about Scotland, you can find it. And we're going to switch quickly back to the home page. On the home page, you will see the last three announcements. But again, there's more, as you just saw. There is a discussion area um, where you can see any of the discussions that are live and active. So the icebreaker is here. People, so you can see who else is in the course and you can message them. When we have quizzes and so forth, uh, quizzes will be listed here. Again, you can see there's a, when it says available until April 8th, that means on April 8th, it goes away. Um, if you need me to bring it back, you'll let me know. Files is a section here of all the files that I've uploaded um, for the course. And um, for example, you see one called uh, Events Scotland. And you can see all of the different PDFs that they've created. We're going to be using some of these. We have a table of contents, one on team building, um, one on operational communications. Here's the general planning one. And again, you can see, you can just click on it. It will load it and open it up where to start. And so you, as you're filling out the business plan, you're going to want to look at almost all of these. Here's the program guide one that just thinking about the program that you're going to be offering at your event and so forth. Um, so, and then finally, um, that's really it. I'll be adding some more modules in here including one for assignments. We'll list the upcoming assignments, um, but I haven't included it yet because I want everybody uh, to focus on the modules. The modules um, includes things like this vocabulary. If you don't, if you went into the assignments area, you would not see these vocabulary because they're not assigned to a particular due date. There's no grading for these. Um, but if you miss these, um, you'll probably not do very well on uh, the pre-quiz. And if you don't do well on the pre-quiz, you may find some of the discussion, uh, you know, a little bit more complex. So that's a very simple example. Um, but I hope that that makes sense. 
Again, this is uh, Professor Shapiro. I'm based in New Jersey. Um, I'm known online as uh, Harry Hawk. And uh, this is uh, Event Marketing 155. This is our week one lecture. I will be doing more of these. I really need your feedback, your comments, um, your honest opinion, your honest feedback. If this isn't working for you, let me know. If you like it, let me know. If you need special lecture, lectures just for you, let me know. There's instructions on the homepage how to do that. I hope everybody has a fantastic week, and I'm so excited that you are part of this course. Events are wonderful. Events have changed my life, and I believe that they will change yours as well. Again, have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.